start uh, good evening to you all uh, the welcome for the overview of emerging technologies and related applications uh, now uh, we everyone knows i think it is automatically been recorded we everyone knows uh, i think you can see my screen am i correct is the screen can you see my screen? Yes, yes sir. we can. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, now, uh, when you work in an environment, there is an environment, there are a lot of factors. Normally, we do the pest analysis or pestle analysis. P is for political environment. E is for economical environment, S for social environment, T for technological environment, again E for the external environment, and L for legal environment. Now, this uh, technological environment is very vulnerable. It is really volatile, fast changing, especially uh, with the digital technology. And we are talking of a digital transformation. It will affect engineering profession, whether you are in civil, electrical, or mechanical law, electronic, or mechatronics or an engineering branch. Because uh, now a lot of applications nowadays, you know about uh, now in people these days, they are talking of artificial intelligence, AI. Though most of the people, they don't know the inside of the AI, they now it has become a buzzword now. You can hardly fi find a person who is not using a chat GPT or its counterparts, etc. Now, therefore, now these emerging engineering technologies, how it will affect an effect, we'll have to look at. This tech, this lecture is not meant for give you a deep knowledge on each technology. But I want to discuss with you about how this technology will shape and will change the lifestyle of people and will change the job opportunities and will change the environmental environment and it will how it will affect for the future right now i have discussed this slide now you can think about the artificial intelligence sorry about some mistakes in that right now ai is a very generic word Right? AI is a very generic word, but AI can be deployed using many other technologies like uh, machine learning and deep learning and natural language processing. Now, uh, until that is uh, chat GPT introduced, we have little bit experienced about narrow AI that perform specific tasks like uh, spam filters. You know, spam filters, now they filter out. They assume that this is this mail is not for you and it will be detrimental. And Google Maps. Now, chatbot logistics and self-driving cars Virtual nursing assistants, 
those are the few examples now another technology now 5g and internet of things now though we have not much experience in the 5g in use cases even other countries also they have not implemented 100 percent 5g network now the question i ask what is 5g the 5g is a access technology 5g is a access technology similar to 3g but this access technology now we can see that we started with the 2g then the 3g with the introduction of 3g we were able to communicate with in you know, three dimensions what we, one is uh, text voice and video so now when it comes with the 4G, it is an enhancement version of the 4G. Then really 5G is also, now uh, because it is a more extended version, but technology deployment is totally different. Now, uh, you know now, Internet of Things means it is device-to-device -device communication. It is device-to-device -device communication. Now, when you talk about the device-to-device -device communication, you know, a uh, device, uh, when uh, sometimes uh, your refrigerator, your refrigerator that, uh, when, for example, when you are, have a vacation, then you can see that you can put some stuff there and you want to control the refrigerator temperature, as you are not at home. Now your mobile device can communicate directly with the refrigerator using IoT technology. Even you can switch off and switch off your security lights during the night time using your mobile device because you have an application. So device to device. Here the issue is now uh, when you talk about the 5G, there is a one word called the latency or latency. Latency means uh, when you communicate something with the uh, device to device, you need a very fast connection. Because if the connection is lost somewhere in the middle of your conversation or middle of the conversation between the devices, that something will happen. So therefore, when you talk in the 5G, there are a lot of, of advantages and plethora of benefits. These plethora of benefits, one benefit is you can have uh, uh, higher bit rate higher bitrate, higher bandwidth, especially the real-time applications, especially, you know, nowadays, that is, if it is not, it is very uncommon to our country, but it is very common to other countries. Now, telemedicine. Now, medical professionals are the heavy users of these technologies. So they use these technologies thanks to this 5G because now in a major cities, you know, there are a lot of in hospitals like in Sri Lanka. Most, you know, specialized persons are very few in numbers in everywhere in this world. They are very few in numbers. Right? When they are very few in numbers, what will they do? They use their services, they can provide their services to the remote clinics and they can examine the patient's situation using the 5G network. Because it's a real time, you can see the pictures and everything without any distortion. 
So therefore, to implement 5G, so to implement telemedicine is the real time. You know what is the difference between the real time and the real time and uh, delay time. The real time applications you need immediately you can know about it. For example, if you are doing with a bank in a transaction, once you send your information to check or transfer 5 million rupees to another bank, they will send you the passport. It is a real time. If it is not a real time application, so somebody schedule time, what will happen? That you can't do the transaction at the time. So therefore, the 5G and Internet, 5G and Internet of Things are two technologies, but 5G is a some giving full support for the <coughs> Internet of Things. Now, we can move to the next slide. Now, serverless computing. You know, sometimes we need a serverless uh, computing is not truly serverless. It is impossible to add computers without a physical server somewhere. But instead, this technology distributes these resources more effectively when no application in use, no resources are allocated. This needed computer power to scales. Right? It means, you know, now when you get this uh, server, you, could, you should not misunderstand Computing, how can a computer device operate without a server? It is not that. Serverless means actually when you use a server, uh, it's a computer server, it's a computer, high-end computer, that you need the services, a lot of applications are running, that particular server allocate the resources for you. When they allocate resources for you, they allocate it in your full time. Even you are using or not using your resources, they re allocate the resources. So therefore, unnecessary resources uh, may be in idling, so they, are, they can allocate these resources for some other purpose. That is called serverless computing. Now, biometrics, and this is uh, now, uh, you know, uh, password paradigm. I think most of you working in uh, companies or institutions, they have your intranet facility. Your system provide you a password. For security purpose, what will happen? You will have to change this password very frequently, not frequently, every the three months back. Quarterly, you will have to reset the password. You know, sometimes it is very tedious exercise because uh, that password, uh, some systems, they don't allow simple passwords. They need mixed characters, but as a result, you have to keep it somewhere or you will have to uh, pass this password to somewhere, somebody. So therefore, this is a very tedious exercise and uh, you will forget the password. Maybe a hectic job for you. What you can do that, that is a biometrics in your facial recognition is possible. They can easily identify you. So they call the biometrics. And another one is the blockchain. It is very a uh, new thing for Sri Lanka, but you know that is a, you have heard about the Bitcoin. It means the cryptocurrency. It is not the rupees, it is not the dollars, but it is a cryptocurrency. But so now you know we mostly our transaction. When you do the transaction, another word comes into mind: the ledger. You know, ledger, it means when you do the transaction everywhere in the bank or somewhere, your ledger is located in Colombo. 
in Sri Lanka, for example, is your server. Or for example, say you are a commercial bank or some other bank, account holder. Now, when you want to use your ATM machine, but your account is open from Madara, but you will have to open uh, get money from somewhere else. But your account is, though you have opened the account in Madara, but actually your all ledger information are now computerized. It is located in a central server in Colombo, in Colombo database. You know, now when these, uh, send, this is called the centralized ledger system. Now, blockchain is uh, decentralized. Decentralized means that is a ledger, a particular ledger. Part of the ledger is, for example, say your account, part of your account in digital form are stored in another server and the rest of the part in second server. So, therefore, uh, it is very difficult to lose records or tamper the records. You know, recently what happened in uh, uh, one of the government institution uh, that a particular database erased. It means the information on uh, information of the drug purchase purchasing. So it, it, due to a wrong command, all information got erased. But if they adapt the blockchain technology, that cannot be happen. Because it is stored in many places, but is combined when when you when system wants to process the data. This is called the blockchain technology, but still it is new. But you can surf through the web and then get I did get a lot of information. So it is a for the blockchain technology. The blockchain technology uses uh, many algorithms. That is uh, that comes with many security features, and it has addressed many vulnerabilities. Right now, again, uh, this is the blockchain system. I explain it. Now you can go to and robotics is uh, another buzzwords you use these days. It means, but though it is uh, very new to Sri Lanka, but it's a little bit matured now, the first industrial robot punched the clock in 1962. Right? Nowadays, you can use the robot and uh, many, many, many purposes. So you, that is also, it is a combination of electronic and mechanical technology. But Please ensure that no technology can survive without a proper IT infrastructure. IT infrastructure is the key ingredient to for these all technologies. Another one is the natural language processing. Now I don't know whether you have experienced these things. If you are an Apple user in an Apple phone, in the now in the iOS operating system supports that, that is a natural language processing application called Siri. That is Siri application actually developed based on the natural language processing. Now, hey Siri, this is a command, but once you now talk to the phone about someone else's number, it automatically dials it. Now, this is the best example for the natural language processing. Now, the... Uh, Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please sit? Right. Uh, you know, uh, now, actually, I, I do this lecture to just keep in my phone uh, uh, nearby. So, when I call Siri, that is, it, it detects my voice. So it means uh, another its counterpart and its competitor, Alexa, now it is developed by the Amazon Technologies. 
so they also use the natural language processing technology to introduce similar application calls here. So therefore, now, this is the best example for that. Now, I, sh I briefly covered that is a net about a new tech or emerging technologies that revolutionize this world. Right? Now, again, uh, I share these uh, lecture notes. Now, I, I will uh, stop sharing and I will move to the another presentation, Digital Disruption. Hope you can see my new screen. Today I'm going to talk of uh, digital transformation and digital disruption. Now, uh, you know, in digital transformation is the word. Now, it is very uh, popular word and buzzword. Even non-engineering community even economists also use it. Uh, when you know that when you pronounce the word digital, it means it's zero or one. But in the sense of uh, understanding for a layman, it uh, provides more deeper meaning than zero and one. It means how this digital transformation made your life easier and comfortable, bringing economies and uh, economies of scale to have an engineering of, uh, process efficient and effective. This one kind of definition for that digital transformation. Now you can see this picture that is the Olympia typewriter, but it was used to transmit telex messages and 30 or 40 years ago. You can see this is the typical typewriter that was used to transmit telex messages. It actually it works. It worked the eight point five baud rate, right? Right. Now in digital, digital enables new ecosystem, right? It makes new business models possible and opens up new ways to interact and engage with customers and delivering right experience. You know, our 19th century, at the beginning, the most of uh, our technologies and the marketing concept was totally different from today. Now they produce what? 
we had we, they had to sell they produce services they had to sell it to this totally different what we have to understand what to sell then based on that we have to decide what we should produce it but still the product oriented so, but now today that people they don't talk about the product they really want to get a experience rather than product so this is a fundamental key that you will have to keep in mind when we uh, transform something for the digital transformation we sell the experience and people need the experience from the technology not the technology as it is Lay layman living in the street they don't care about the 4g how the 4g operates whether it's a WCDMO, HSDPAO, long-term evolution makes no sense. What they get out of this only makes sense. Therefore, now we are talking of the experience and that word came due to the digital transformation. Now here you can see the traditional experience was a positive digital experience that makes Best example, I can get it from the Netflix. You know, Netflix is now most youngsters, but still Sri Lanka, I cannot say this is a, in the saturated market. Now, you know, now in a 20 or 30 years ago, the before the VHS cassettes produced, we had to go for the cinema to watch a movie. When the VHS and video decks, normally known as video decks, video cassette recorders introduced, now in these those days, now we went for the video parlors to get video on rent through the VHS cassettes. These re so I want to watch a movie. Then travel to a blockbuster. Choose a movie and travel home, watch the movie and return the cassette. But now you have very good home theater systems at home and 4G connections of Y connection at your home. That you can get the net, you can subscribe to the Netflix and watch a movie, get in the real movie experience, but you can get from visiting cinema. But it is debatable because even you that cinema experience and the home theater experience may be a little different. But but thing is, is now most of the now that is that is also change. That is why I am telling with the digital transformation. Social transformation also took place. Now, though the people still go to the cinema, but most of the, that is the movies in the cinema industry, they make money through their uh, digital libraries. Right? Now you can understand it. Now another thing here, I explain it. Fine. Right? Businesses, industries, institutions, societies, and countries, economies, certain individuals, you need data and information. Transfer the data and information. To have a real time experience. The data is the new oil. The definition of the data is a new oil. Now, you know, oil is very expensive. Oil, oil is very expensive. 
the countries uh, that produce oil are very rich. Why is it? Oil is required by everyone. You cannot depend. No single country can depend without oil. So therefore data is also expensive. Right? Data is expensive. Not only expensive, it is very valuable. Now, look at this uh, diagram. It says uh, digitization. You can convert data into process. You can collect the customer data and you can process through with the CRM system and you provide the information to the businesses for decision making. Now we need a conversion, adaption and creation. It is more towards the digital transformation. Now you can see uh, without digital, here this is a document. Art copy. You know this art copy, you will have to keep large record rooms. You need another person to uh, uh, to appoint as a caretaker for these records. But now, here you can understand, here, digitization. Now, this is very simple. I, I want to exp explain simply. These are all the records you can convert through a digital images through a scanning machine. After that, it can be stored to a computer. Now we were not only desktop computer, you can store in the cloud. You know, cloud technology is another emerging technology. But time is not enough to explain about the cloud. How can I explain a little bit on the cloud? The cloud means, uh, for example, in your office, you may have five or 10 computers. The separate, the, each person has a separate hard disk. Each person has a separate memory. And each person has a separate process, processor. If you combine these all five or six or seven processors, you can form a, another server, but server position is not important. So then the resources can be allocated through a virtual machine. But you need access to, you need a computer to access it. That is a different story. There is a different story. But you can now understand that when, now most of the organizations, like irrigation department, like buildings department, like water board, they have their own servers to run their billing system, run their HR systems, run their ERP systems, run their CRM systems. But you can, but you must need expertise knowledge to maintain a data center in your own data center. And you have to provide the geographical redundancy to these data centers. Here yeah, at a cost. So what you can do is now, you can get these services from the cloud. It means that you are not getting a physical computer, but you are getting storage. Say, I need, the, I need 150 terabytes. And I need a 16... Uh, GB RAM. I need the uh, processing power processor is uh, similar to Pentium. Right? Or, C or C C7, uh, sorry, or uh, 
uh, it means not the pen D5, pen D6 of H7. I7 computer. Sorry. Okay. Now, in here, uh, you can see that this is a digitalization once again. You can see how the digitally transformed it. How digitally transformed. Now, I am going to tell you about the digital economy. In a digital economy, that is most of the people, businesses, data, devices, and processes are interconnected. The digital economy. In digital economy, you can save a lot. People will get its advantages. Businesses get ad advantages. And data can be effectively used it. Devices can communicate with each other. Processes can be run efficient. Now, this is a little bit of architecture of a digital economy. But anyway, to run the digital economy, you need the bottom, you need the telecom service backbone or data communication backbone. So without data communication backbone, you cannot go for the digital economy. Right? Then above that, you need the IT hardware and software. IT infrastructure important about the telecom line they had run. Telecom or data communication infrastructure is a must. Then the IT systems. Then e-commerce applications, digital content, digital solutions, and internet platforms. Those are required. Now, for example, uh, right now, we know you know the most of in Sri Lanka now, patients in visit hospitals. Right? But same person can visit a gold hospital. After that, he may visit to Colombo Hospital when he is in Colombo. But nowadays, records are not updated. If you use an, your ID number, your patient history and everything, you can do the easily do using this digital this architecture. What you need is telecom infrastructure or data communication infrastructure. It should be required. But in Sri Lanka, not but in Sri Lanka, we have a very good telecom infrastructure all over the cities. Cities are very well interconnected. So therefore, that is the fiber backbone in our country is more sufficient to interconnect any office. Then look at the IT hardware and software. This is the question. Now, this may be one hospital. It is not sufficient to digitalize only one hospital. All hospitals and all clinics should be interconnected with IT hardware and software. Then there should be a digital content and internet platforms, solution, etc. Then only we can move into the digital health service. Now in here, you can use that, this slide, autonomous cars, ledger technology, your drone technology, weather forecast, telemedicine, and IoT. Here, you can write. So you can go to the slide. Now in here, why do we use this word disruption? 
the word disruption sometimes a little bit annoying. It always tells about annoying. Digital disruption. Disruption. Now you can look at this uh, black color one. This black color one is a frequency is very high pass changing. Now in a in a history in history, technology changes, technology changes at a very slow rate. Whereas technology changes very high rate at present and in future. Now, you know when the technology change, what will happen? New technology is emerging. Because of new technology is emerging. New technology comes with a plethora of benefits compared to the previous technology. But again, this is a disruption. Now, for example, say I installed system in my company. Anyway, that uh, it may be five years old. Now, another new system, new system, uh, this new system brings new system brings uh, new benefits and my competitor will immediately adapt to that technology. What will happen? This technological change change actually it disrupted my life. My company life. It disrupted. This is a disruption came as a part of technological change. Part of technological revolution and evolution. But problem is if a person or company or country who can take this disruption as a challenge can survive but the person who are not ready to take this disruption as a challenge cannot survive in this world. That is what I want to say. That is called the agility. You know which animal it is. It is a lizard. You know lizard is famous for changing color to protect his from the environment. Right? Why he survived? He survived by the features by the gifted by nature. Then only he can survive it. So therefore, if you are not ready to take the challenge, definitely you cannot survive it. Okay? Now you can understand parents. So, in summary, digital disrupts everything. That creates limitless possibilities. What's accepted from you? Sometimes I may be a disruptor. If I am a company that provides a digital solution, if you are, you can change something, you be a disruptor. The being a disruptor is also advantage. Now, uh, excuse me, uh, now dear students that uh, participants, uh, can I get a five, 10 minutes break? I will come back, okay? Please stay connected. Okay, sir. Okay, 10 minutes break, huh? okay.
Hello, yes, uh, welcome back. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me yes. now? Okay. Sorry. Uh, now, uh, today I'm going to give a little bit of uh, highlight on, wait a minute. On uh, digital uh, transformation and industry and 4.0. Extended and uh, extended reality. Uh, this is a little bit uh, much talk subject these days. Uh, now you know what is the industry four zero standard. Now everyone knows. We have come across, uh, sorry, we have uh, come to this stage passing many milestones, technological milestones. Milestones means that is uh, something uh, that is uh, we can uh, give certain remarks on particular year. Now in here, first, Industrial Revolution. It hit, happened mid 1800. You can see steam powered machines. Locomotive train transportation. Technification of textile and other industries. First Industrial Revolution. So you can take it as uh, Industry 4.1. Industry, sorry, uh, that is a, is a 4.0 now we are here. Uh, that is, there is no such a standard call. You can say sometimes in the three point or whatever it is. Now, early 1900, it means the beginning of 20th century, 20th century, electricity generation, distribution and commercialization took place. In electricity, Generation, distribution, and commercialization took place. And uh, the world manufacturers, there was a trend, mass and serial production. Then another, the communication. Development of a telecommunication begin. Now, late 1960, electronics valves replaced by electronics elements like uh, transistors, then the computers, robotics and automations, early software developments. But now, fourth industrial revolution, it means it's four, three, two, and one, one, two, three, four. 1.0, 2.0, Now the digitalization took place. Network and Internet of Things. Big Data and Analytics. AI supported by machine learning. Robots. Additive manufacturing and blockchain. This is our journey. Now we are here now. Let's go. Now, even for a digital transformation, sorry, one word is uh, misspelled. Uh, digital transformation, you can correct it, digital transmission. You cannot transform your businesses, company to digital transformation, complete transformation unless you have certain basic requirements. You need, uh, it is uh, not limited to this, but you need, may need uh, enterprise resource planning applications, customer relationship management application. You know what are, what is the enterprise resource planning? 
I think most of you uh, have heard of this. Enterprise resource planning. Enterprise resource planning is a application that deal with all your asset registers, your HR functions, uh, and sometimes your project information, your operation functions, etc. That deal with your enterprise resources. Right? It means, uh, for example, uh, now, Say you are an employee of a IT department, sorry, say a project division. Then the project division, once you are appointed as a project manager, for you, everything, depending your job profile is visible for you, whatever you do, whatever you complete, Whatever not complete can be can be monitored and supervised by these ERP modules. Once you transfer from your project department to the operation department, or you sometimes you take early retirement, that your system shows that. Those are the inventories comes under you and uh, you have not closed these inventories and the other things you can, they can track. So your EP, so not your EPF, the gratuity and the other things not will be released until you clear those things. Again, if you are a project manager, Say you may request particular item through the project module. So your request will go to the automatically requisition. It give a, automatically it give a gives a requisition to purchasing department. Purchasing department will start the purchasing. Once it is purchased, it is maybe it it is uh, uh, stored in the store. Then anyone can see that how many such items you have ordered and what are the items kept in idly without use it. That kind of visibility is there. So it is one part of the digitalization. And customer relationship management. CRM systems means it... it comes with a lot of modules. The one module is your customer data. Say each and every customer, you have a profile. You have their contact numbers. What services they have subscribed in the organization, it is marked. And what is the, their interest also marked it. And even what are the products you are going to propose to the future or sometimes the product catalog is also another module. When customer, same customer wants to buy a new product, he make a request to the system. Then system generate work order. Another customer agent can decide based on your product catalog what is the price and how can we position the product or the product or service? They can close the works order or they can pass the work order to some other operation department. Operation department, they close the works order, then billing starts. Now these things can be handled through the customer regime. Another one is the business process model. How all the business processes are interconnected. <laughs> More importantly, computing and network infrastructure. 
without it without networking you cannot transform digital and automation of manufacturing if it's a manufacturing company or process oriented company you'll have to process auto, uh, automate these all processes now what i am going to uh, tell you about technologies for industry uh, for industry for now there are a lot of technologies here i selected two technologies three technologies one is a virtual reality another one is a augmented reality another one is mixed reality that it comes with 4.0 uh standard virtual reality means now the use uh, for example now it can create a completely digital synthet synthetic digital world you can use certain uh, like a visor or camera the your total company to her, you can garage. It is a completely synthetic digital world. It gives you a digital world. It is a not a real one, it is a prototype one, but digitally created. But then the augmented reality means digital elements are added to users reality for examples now what can i say now say uh, you have a house now house is constructed now if you can have particular application what you can do you want to buy sofa or place the sofa to your room and you want to see that how it is matched. Using your computer system or your device, you can have a true picture of your house flow through your camera and you can pick the certain digital image about the furniture you selected to place it to a veranda. Then you can see whether this color is match, whether this place this is right. This is an example. The mixed reality evolution of AR in terms of close relationship with the digital object, the real environment. It is a real environment. Close relation with the digital objects. Right now, here virtual reality for training. You know, traditional training requires a classroom training. In a blackboard, you can have a training, a whiteboard nowadays. What will happen? Is a typical classroom training. Right now, in here, you can see this person wearing a voice again. So, through this, the particular system can generate its digital image for to show him how this is trained. Actually, there is a pilot, mostly pilots are trained by this way. 
in the very beginning. Now, augmented reality, I explain it a little bit. Here, the augmented reality, it means that you can see this object physically, but you want to change it, this one, but uh, now you can see the through the camera. If you change it, what will happen? That's right. Now, today I am going to discuss about you, discuss with you about sometimes use cases, mostly the healthcare. Right? How the XR, XR means now XR is the common word to use virtual reality, augmented reality and Another one, I told you, uh, that is a hybrid model, right in here, you can understand about it, virtual reality, XR means in mixture of that, right, in here, mixed reality, virtual augmented mixed reality. Now see how this, those can be implemented in medical healthcare. Now one, improved patient education, self-care and engagement. XR based means, when you word use the XR, maybe one technology or two or three technologies. Tool for patients who do not have access for the medical help or experience problem that do not require the physical presence of a profession. You don't want to see a doctor at home. Patient can utilize this XR, explain their symptoms with the help of virtual stimuli and track their healing process. Improve physical therapy. Get direction as some of the nearest medical professionals. Better grasp their condition and make informed decisions and view their medical data. Now you can understand. Augmented surgeries. You know, surgeries, AR technology, it means the augmented reality can serve as assistant tool in surgical procedures. Especially when used through glasses or lenses by doctors. With AR tool, doctors can impose relevant information and schematics on their vision while keeping their hands free. The hand free practical application include step by step surgical visualization, monitoring patent vitals real time. I explain everything, I don't want to repeat. And augmented, augmented diagnosis. Now, here doctors with the AR handset weaving patient data, right? While that is a patient is there, we can use that is a patient data. Using patient data is the augmented reality. You can think that if, if you prescribe this drug, what will happen? So digitally create the how this drug effect for him before he uh, uh, gives the drug. In the medical education, right? And uh, this in here, improved first aid and uh, assisted therapy, pain management. This is authorized by FDA. Now again, another one, pharma marketing and advertisements. You can see here, increased immunity. You can see here, actually that is the, you can see how it is used, right? Okay, and simplified hospital navigation. Now, you can go there, sometimes hospital, you will have to from the room, you will have to go some other cardiology division by walking. But while you are in the hospital, you can navigate it and get something ordered. So those are the things I wish to discuss with you about how this technology can influence our life.
So I have another set of slides that is about how that is uh, technology can be used to improve the agriculture. I will share these lecture notes. So uh, do you have any question? Please ask. Do you have questions? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Did you understand what I taught? Yes, sir. We understood. And uh, would I please know what areas we uh, improve to get uh, to face the examination? Well, yes. Now, in examination, there are two questions on the management subject. It's management means the practicing engineering practice and emerging technologies. In emerging technologies, they may sometimes ask particular technology, introduce particular technology, how that is a technological landscape, can develop certain uh, can develop how sorry not develop how, how that is a certain te the particular te technology or se uh, set of technologies can improve the performance of particular industry that may be agriculture that may be uh, using the technologies use of technologies but in here uh, what I am I don't expect we don't expect that you need to know very deep knowledge of the technology. Only thing is now, because most of you are from uh, different backgrounds. So, but this, uh, I have explained it in the layman language. How these applications like uh, technology, now, digital transformation for zero standard. And I explain about how the digital disruption takes place. So, how these technology, emerging technologies change the industries, change the economies, change the lifestyle of the people. And what what are the, uh, how can I say, what are the obstructions that will you have to face when these technologies are introduced? Because this is a high level, explanation is required, not going, sometimes you, if you are an expert, you can write, but don't waste to write in the union nuts and bolts. I'm telling you. I think, hope uh, I clarified your question. Am I correct? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Anyway, did you understand what I said? It is uh, important for you, or that is, uh, you do, do you get something out of these lectures? Yes, sir. We understood, and it was uh, really uh, informative presentation for us because we okay. we are only focus about our field only, but yeah. uh, the, with this presentation. Uh, I open to go beyond the technology, go go through the technology. Yeah, and uh, what is uh, in probably which which uh, company you are working or which institution you are working or which department? Yes, I am uh, probably from uh, CEB, sir. Currently, I am attached to the Calcisa Combined Cycle Power Station okay. uh, Operation okay. Engine. Okay. Yeah, so therefore you can now see the uh, you can. Uh, now, now you know about uh, in your field, which is definitely that that the smart grid concepts. Now yes. are emerging applications, smart grids, because a particular that is that is only for the specialized in the electrical uh, engineers, right? Yes. Sir. Smart grid uh, actually, you know the value of the smart grid and uh, with the smart grid and micro grid concept also coming. So, underlying technology is the IT infrastructure, right? Without IT infrastructure, 
you cannot deploy it. Right? Yes, sir. You want uh, some ERP system, not I am telling the very expensive ERP system, but I am telling that sometimes that, that with the, the issue is this, when you select the proper technology, you have to think about the to your company cost as well. So today the biggest problem, we go for the very highest and branded product. Sometimes these costs are not afforded. Right? So always you'll have to think about that uh, total cost ownership. That is a management question comes. When you select the proper technology, I know that is a, you are most of your grids are and generation generating station, generation uh, stations are connected through SCADA system. Am I correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, Previously in AFC yeah, and yeah. now SCADA. Yeah, SCADA is running on optical fibers, physical layer. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Because all SCADA now provide the service of optical fiber. So your I all IEDs are connected. Finally, it is IP technology. Yes. Right. So therefore, again, I can say IT infrastructure. Right. But again, yes, when you use the digital, when you use the digital technology, there are some risks as well. I have not covered that part. The possible risks are actually in the digital world, we it is impossible to see what is happening inside. So therefore, your network security side also should be well addressed. You should have a clear-cut policies, especially information security policies. Right? Because now cyber attacks are very common in this world. One side that we are developing the digital world. Thanks to the digital disruptors. But again, hackers also are taking advantage to develop their hacking weapons to destroy someone else's asset. That also challenge. But again, that is why we can counter, deploy a counter strategy that we can deploy a very good, robust a uh, highly scalable security system for mission critical applications. I hope uh, you understood my question, explanation. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes, I understood. Yeah. Do you have any uh, others? Do you have any question? Others, do you have some questions? Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, when we are... Yeah. Yeah. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I, I audible. Yes. Sir, when we answer, uh, answer uh, the B paper exam, what is yeah. the minimum word count do you expect generally? This is an open-end question. Right? We cannot say what is the minimum word count. But only thing is, uh, better you write in the descriptive manner as uh, much as possible. You have to write in grammatically correct. Grammar is also important, but I am not going to say that 100% uh, grammatical because sometimes you also do the mistake in the gram. Right? But your structure, answering structure that, that you must uh, bring the proper facts, logical manner. When I set the question in the open-ended question, I cannot expect from all people to have a unique answer. But your argument, you will have to bring that argument. For example, you can say that why this is, a, for example, 5G technology is a expensive for our country. We don't require, but we can manage with 4G, for example. Then you can bring certain facts to say that. But some other person can say 5G is the best solution for this country. Okay? You got the point? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, right. What else? What else? The 
Now I will ask one by one that is uh, one is Haputan three. Are you there? Haputan three. Are you there? Okay, Bandar and Lakit. Are you there? Yes, sir. Lakit in which company or which institution, which uh, company you are working? I am I am in the construction, building construction sector. Yeah. But uh, don't worry about because even for the building construction, sometimes to manage the projects, you need ERP software. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, because especially managing the construction project, you need a lot of project activities. You have to maintain the project dossiers. So for that purpose, your company must deploy a, a ERP system. Right? That is how the contractor's payments are passed. Right, how that is, uh, the, how uh, the inventories are controlled, and you may have a different sites. That all the sites that information you can uh, get in a uh, using uh, your project managers, they are using their computers for their PCs, so sometimes they are smartphones. So that is also digital transformation is required. Okay. I think, did you understand even your civil injury, you must be able to understand it. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. How about Madura? Any MNS say summer Vikram? Is a summer Vikram? Okay, I hope that is you got answer, but I will share certain slides that I have prepared for last year and uh, so you can get certain uh, you know, information. So hope that uh, because this is a te emerging technologies I cannot cover within a couple of hours. Uh, you don't want to get a very deep knowledge about the artificial intelligence and uh, artificial intelligence and uh, Deep learning and machine. Actually, artificial intelligence means it is a wide meaning, but underlying technologies are uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning and uh, natural language processing. I explain you the application theory. It is a natural language processing. And you have the chat GPT and the other things are based on mostly deep learning. So I think you got to all understood. Uh, my telephone number is not seven one. I use a chat. Not seven one. Seven three six seven nine one. You can use your WhatsApp messages uh, for if you know to know about these two lectures I conducted. Hope you understood. And these uh, lectures uh, may be useful for you one day. I will share some other lectures as well. So then uh, I will wind up the session. Thank you very much for your patience and good night and have a nice weekend. Thank you. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much.